Hi, in this video I'm going to review this Tomla DM501S digital microscope geared towards electronics work, such as soldering and repairs. This is a back-to-back -back review of digital microscopes from Tomla, as I just did a review of their DM602 Flex 10.1 inch digital microscope in my last video. This one was actually provided to me by a different source. In fact, they contacted me right after I got the DM602, and I thought this one would be a good comparison, as it has a different stand and mounting mechanism. Anyway, I will provide a link in the video description below, as usual, for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. And be sure to check out my review video of the DM602 Flex as well, and you can decide which model suits your needs the best. There are a few things unique about the DM501S. The first thing I wanted to point out is that it has a built-in battery, so it can be operated without a power source for 3-4 to four hours, according to the manual. Now, this is great in my opinion, as it reduces the clutter. The second thing that is unique about the DM501S is the included articulating arm, and I do want to contrast this arm design to the one included with the DM602 Flex. Let me try bring the DM602 into view here. I might need to change the angle a little bit. As you can probably see, in comparison to the DM602, the included articulating arm with the DM501S is more compact. And it looks pretty slick, and if you look at it, it does have a very wide range of motion. You can tilt it, you can rotate it, you can push it down, and it is certainly very convenient here. Unlike the articulating arm included in the DM602 Flex, which is spring-loaded, this one is friction-fit, and it is a lot more stiffer to operate. One of the benefits of this stiff design is that the image is a lot more stable. As the arm does not flex as much, you can see that I can try to push it from left to right, it barely moves. Similarly, if I try to push it down, it remains in place. But this does mean that the stand is a lot harder to adjust. Also, the stand does not auto-level the display. So, for example, if I try to push it down, the display I need to readjust so that it remains leveled. Whereas on the DM602, you can see that I can push it up and down. The display remains leveled due to the articulating arm design. But that's not the case for the DM501S. All right. Now let me show you how this display is mounted on this articulating arm. The reason I haven't shown you that is because I wanted to give you a clear view of the arm itself. And also the display itself, as you can see, is glossy. I really hate this glossy display as it is just very distracting for video recording. Anyway, so let me show you. All you do is there is a spring-loaded bracket. You just slide it in place. Now, the rigidity of the stand is somewhat compromised by the mounting mechanism of the integrated microscope display. You can see here, the display is secured by these spring-loaded jaws. And unfortunately, it has a lot of play after the display is mounted. Although it looks a little bit peculiar as the jaw only grabs onto the top quarter of the display, the grab is actually strong enough, and the display will not fall off. That is not the issue. The issue I have here is that the way the display is mounted almost looks like an afterthought. But it's actually not. If you look at the manual here, you will see that that is how it's supposed to be mounted, with the jaws sticking out here. In my opinion, it would be more secure if the brackets can slide down towards the middle of the display, but it's not possible given that the design, you can see that the display has these protruding sections. Not sure if you can see that, but it's right below the bracket here, so it wouldn't be able to slide further down given this specific design. But I suppose you could fit it with a little bit of foam padding. As you can see, there's a lot of space here. So I suppose if you insert a piece of foam in here, it would be able to make the display a little bit more secure. Another unique feature of the DM501S is that it comes with this independent gooseneck lighting system. You can clip onto pretty much anywhere you want. These lights can be powered by a 5V USB adapter, and the necks on these gooseneck lights are long enough, and they are very flexible, as you can see here. Now, let me show you how this works. So we have this hand controller. You can turn it on, and you can see the light here. And we can adjust the lighting too. So there are nine levels of uh, different brightness here. So that's actually quite convenient, you can see here. And also you can turn on just one light, the other light, and cycle it through. So that is a neat feature as well. As you can see here, at full brightness, we're just drawing above one amp. Of course, I can dim it, 
and at the dimmest setting, let's just do that, we're drawing about 100 milliamps, and that's with both of the lights on. Of course, if we turn off one of them, we are going to reduce the current consumption by half. Because the lights are detached, they are definitely more versatile. You can use them for other purposes, and you can even power them with a battery bank. And here is the packing list in case you are wondering what is included with this microscope. Now, in the package I received, there were a couple of extra items. There was a 5 volt charger, adapter, and also a battery-powered microscope stage. Speaking of which, here it is. You can see this tiny microscope stage, and it is battery-powered, and it's very convenient to use. I actually like this battery-powered ones, as it's a lot more easy to use compared to the one that is supplied with the DM602, which requires an external 5 volts power supply. Unlike the DM602 I reviewed last time though, the lens on this DM501S is fixed, and you can't swap it out. But I did play around earlier. It actually has a very wide object distance range, from roughly 1 centimeter to at least a few meters, so we can focus on things pretty much at any distance. By the way, the lens also includes an integrated light source around the lens at the top, and we will look at it later. And just like the DM602, the DM501S also is touted as a soldering microscope, and it comes with the same kind of soldering mat like I showed you last time. It feels like a heavy-duty one with many compartments. Here and there, you can put your dissembled components. It even has these magnetic areas where you can put some dissembled parts. Let me just see if I can put this here. Yeah, you can see that. We can put screws or your tools in these magnetic compartments. So that's definitely very convenient, and you don't have to worry about losing these things. The main issue of this mat, in my opinion, is that the working area is quite limited. I also pointed that out last time as well. I would have preferred if it was just a nice flat piece without all these sections. Because it is battery powered, it is a lot cleaner, as I mentioned earlier. You don't have to worry about the wires. Of course, you can always hook it up with a charger if you need to. The lens has quite a bit of focusable range, and you can always adjust the height to get the appropriate magnification you desire. Just to give you an idea, here the lens is at 30 centimeters above the surface, as you can see here. It is actually quite far from the surface. And you can see we have about 6 centimeters of field of view. So let's just confirm the distance. You can see here, indeed, we are about 30 centimeters away from the lens. If you recall, when we reviewed the DM602 at the same height, the field of view is actually a little bit wider, at 10 centimeters instead of the 6 we have here. And now that's because the lens on the DM501S has a slightly higher magnification at this distance. Now, because of the higher magnification, the captured image is also a little dimmer compared to that on the DM602, given the same lighting condition. And at this distance, you should be able to do most of the soldering job, just to give you some perspective, here is a soldering iron with a conical tip. You can see that, and if I move it into view, you can see the magnification is quite decent. So you should be able to do most of the soldering with this height. Of course, if you want a higher magnification, you can always move the lens closer to the surface. As I mentioned earlier, the lens has integrated lighting, and you can turn it on and off by sliding your finger across this area. And let me just show you here. So if I want to turn it on, I can turn it on, and if I want to turn it off, I slide the other way. Now let me turn it on. Now this is actually not very intuitive, as although it was mentioned in the user manual, I could not actually figure out where the control was until I accidentally touched this bar here, because there's no indication this is actually for you to turn on the light here. The integrated lighting is definitely not as good as the ring light, in my opinion, especially if you are at a greater distance from the surface, as the integrated lighting has limited range. But it does have a polarizer, and you can adjust the polarization of the light by twisting the ring here. So it is extremely useful when trying to determine the markings on the chip. And let me just uh, demonstrate here. So here we have the polarized light, and if I twist it, so this is uh, our typical lighting. Now, it depends on the etching on the surface of the chip. You may or may not want to use polarized light. So let's change to the other direction here. So you can see, we can see the 31512C very clearly here with the polarizer on. And if I remove the polarizer, you can see that. We can still see it, but now you started seeing some reflection. 
So that is actually very useful if you are trying to determine the markings on the chip without having to change the light source. Of course, you can always use the gooseneck light to adjust the direction of lighting that serves the same purpose as well. And here I can show you another example. Here without the polarizer you can see, we can see the reflection from the board, which makes the marking harder to see. But if we add a polarizer, you can see that immediately the glare is less. And you can see the markings on this memory chip a lot clearer. And let's take a look at another chip here. So this is with polarizer, and here is without polarizer. You can see the difference here. So to give you some reference, now we're about, you can see here, we're about 10 centimeters above the surface, and we have a field of view of roughly, roughly two centimeters. You can control the microscope with the buttons underneath the display here, or you can use the supplied remote control. Now, given how much play this display has, you can see here, I would not recommend using the buttons here as it will mess up your focusing. So I would just stick with the included remote control. The remote is actually very easy to use. You can see here, we can change the magnification by the up and down arrow. We can start recording and stop recording. We can take a picture, you can see here, and that's not a problem. And we can play back the image here. So not a problem at all. Compared to the DM602, the one feature that is lacking here is the ability to invert the image. Now that said, with the included polarizer, I don't think that's necessary anymore. Also, the microscope comes with a 32 gigabytes micro SD card, which offers plenty of storage. The DM501S also supports external monitor via HDMI as well. And this is a great feature as you can project the images onto a much bigger screen, as you can see here. I really like the external monitor implementation with this DM501S, as when external monitor is connected, you can still see the image on the microscope itself. And if you recall, this is not the case with the DM602. When I connected the DM602 to an external monitor, the image would appear on the external monitor only, and the microscope itself would go dark. So I'd definitely give the HDMI implementation on this DM501S a big thumbs up. Since I have it set up already, let's take a look at another board here. So this is a densely populated board. You can see, we can see these components and the markings with no problems at all. Since we have this supplied microscope light stage, let's take a look at a few slides, by the way. The DM501S does not come with slides. I'm using the ones that came with the DM602. And you can see, obviously, we don't have the same magnification, but this picture of the pine stem is quite decent. And right now, the object distance is about one centimeter, and you can see we are able to capture a lot of details of that microscope slide. And here, we're looking at the wing of a honeybee. And here, we're looking at the cells on the onion skin. So as you can see that, although we only have a single lens on this DM501S, it actually offers quite a bit of a magnification if the object is placed close. So there are quite a few things I like about this DM501S. For instance, its built-in battery, the integrated polarizer, and the HDMI mirroring display option. The folding arm design is also aesthetically pleasing. The concept of this folding arm design is great, but the implementation falls a little bit short as it is a bit too stiff and too difficult to adjust. The main drawback, in my opinion though, is this screen holder design. It really feels like an afterthought, but I suppose you could make it less wobbly by inserting a piece of foam between the display and the back of the holder. The captured image quality is very similar to that of the DM602, and is quite reasonable. Either the DM501S or the DM602 I reviewed last time, in my opinion, are superior to the ones with integrated stands, as they offer more flexibility and have greater working distance. Which one do you like better? Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will catch up with you next time.